All right, guys, black is here. Listen, check this. Um, I had a fan to ask me to make a video on why I say I should, you shouldn't use Lucas. Now, he didn't specify, but I'm assuming either one is bull crap, whether it's Lucas transmission, um, anti-slip or whatever, or if it's Lucas or stabilizer, any of that crap is a complete waste of money. It's a waste of time. Okay, now I looked in my my you know I have like two thousand videos, so I checked and I did have a video from two thousand fifteen, but I did a lot of cursing in that video, and it had about eleven thousand views, but I've only made like sixteen dollars off that video, so probably because I did a lot of cursing. So I need to make a video that's less cursing. You know, back then. Well, the YouTube didn't really care back then. But anyway, all right, so why do I say Lucas is a waste of money? Now, I don't only say Lucas is a waste of money. I say any gas treatment is a waste of money. Any oil treatment is a waste of money. Any anti-slip transmission additive is a waste of money. Any kind of stock leak for power steering pumps, for uh, radiator, for transmission, for oil, all of that stuff is 100% bullcrap. Now, you will find videos on YouTube that swear up and down the stuff work. Scotty Kilmer is one of them. Now, he loves to push this stuff called AT205. It's an oil stop leak crap. Um, at the same time, there's there is a video that I found where I'm guessing they wasn't paying him anymore, and he came out and said, any additive you buy is a waste of money. You have to fix the problem. You can't buy an additive to fix it for you. Some years ago, I remember seeing some stuff on the shelf that said something about if your car won't pass emission, try this stuff, and it'll pads. And I was thinking to myself, this is 100% bullcrap. And I'll tell you what. Now, I'm going to give you an example. My sister had like an early 90 Chevy Astro van that wouldn't pass emission. She took it to a mission place and the guy said it was some, there was a problem with the EGR. Okay. I don't remember what it took to fix the car because she and I got into an argument and she ended up taking it to a mechanic, but she had to take it to a mechanic for him to fix the uh, whatever the problem was. So again, how can you go to a store and buy a single product, a single product that you put in the gas tank and it's going to make your car pass? Because think about it, there could be several problems with your car that could cause it to not pass emission. There's some cars, like I had a cousin that had, I can't remember. I want to say it was a 2000 um, Isuzu Rodeo or Suzu Trooper or whatever it was, R Rodeo. It wouldn't pass emission because the gas hand didn't work. In some kind of way, because the gas hand didn't work, it wouldn't pass emission. So think about putting that additive in the gas tank. How would that fix the um, the the gauge? You know, that's why the car wouldn't pass because the gauge wouldn't work. But getting back to the Lucas stuff, it's all bullcrap. So people ask the question, "Well, Black, if it's bullcrap, why do people buy it?" And the answer is real simple: because people are stupid. People don't. Let me change that. They're not, they're stupid. They're stupid. Because you try to tell them, they won't listen to you. And stupid means you can't learn. And if you try to tell somebody not to do something and they, and they still do it, it's stupid. The car wizard, he had a video where he talked about this Ford truck. And he said that the oil light was coming on. And the people had changed the oil sending unit. The light was still coming on. 
So he said he found out that the engine was worn out. And because the engine was worn, I think it had like 185,000 miles. And he said because the engine had 185,000 miles, it had low oil pressure. And he's claimed that he called some of his Ford friends and they told him to put Lucas oil stabilizer in it. And he put oil, Lucas, and oh, oh, let me tell you, they claimed that when they put this Lucas oil stabilizer in there, it built up the oil pressure. And they had the nerve to say that, you know, this is what we put in people's cars because we don't want to uh, charge them to rebuild a motor or to put a new motor in it. Now, Think about this for a sec. I made a video earlier about this, this bull crap lie he told. Do you honestly believe a Ford dealership is going to tell you to put Lucas in your truck and they're not going to make much money off that or tell you you need a new motor to stop your oil life from coming up? Do you honestly believe a Ford dealership or any dealership is going to tell you, Mr. Johnson, um, you need a motor, but you know what? If you put this Lucas in there, you can you can keep driving the truck for probably another 50,000 miles. Do you honestly believe a dealership is going to tell a customer that? But that's the bullshit. Ooh, that's the bull crap lie the car was told. You know why? Because Lucas paid him to make that crap commercial. I mean, that crap video. But getting back to it, Oil, oil stabilizers, oil treatment has been around for a long time. Lucas is not the first one. I mean, I remember STP had an oil treatment. The stuff was so damn thick, you had to heat it up to pour it out. I mean, if you just open up the can and pour it, it come, it come out like, like sir. No, it came out thicker than syrup. It came out like freaking glue or something. It was really, really thick. But anyway... None of that stuff is going to help your car, you know. Um, you know, I, I hear people say all the time, oh, oh, my God, let me tell you. This guy I knew, um, he and I went to school together. He had a 2017 Hyundai Sonata, okay. This car, when I met him, it had like 130-some thousand miles, okay. It was a... Like I said, it was a 2017 Hyundai Sonata. It had a 2.4 four-cylinder, and I think it's got like 180 horsepower. So I wanted to drive it because i never driven a four-cylinder normally aspirated with that much horsepower. So I wanted to drive the car to see what it feel like. I'm in a parking lot, and I ain't even pulled out on the street, and the damn oil light comes on. So I'm not going to drive somebody's car with the oil light coming on. I'm not going to do it. So I, I back. Back, back into the apartment, stopped and checked the oil, and he tells me, oh, well, you know, I'm going to get the oil changed Friday. Okay, this was like Saturday or Sunday. So I popped the hood and checked the damn oil. There's no oil on the stick. And I'm like, dude, you need oil in your car. And he's like, no, I'm getting the oil changed Friday. I'm like, dude, there's no oil in your car. The oil light is coming on. He, like so many people in this world, they think that when the light, oil light comes on, that means it's time to add oil. When the oil light comes on, it means you have no oil pressure. That's what that light means. But anyway, sometime later, he started having a problem with his engine. I heard, I had never heard this before. Hyundai has designed Okay, you have knock sensors inside the engine. Well, on the engine anyway. I knew that knock sensors listen for pre ignition or detonation. I knew that. I knew that. I found out through this Hyundai that it listened for engine knock. It listened for rod knock. So when you run your car low in oil, you don't change the oil, if the engine becomes high mileage and the engine starts to tap, knock, you won't hear it, but the computer will. And when it hear that knocking, it will reduce power and turn on the check engine light. And you get a cold, meaning that basically your rod bearings are bad and you need an engine rebuild. Well, because he was running his car low in oil, it wore out the bearings and he got this cold. Can you believe that crap? 
Well, anyway, he asked me that he think that I think put Lucas in would fix his problem. I told him to waste some time. And he ended up taking it to the Hyundai dealership in some kind of way. He got them to uh, fix it. I don't know how much he paid, but he got them to fix it anyway. But get back to it. So why again? People ask if Lucas don't work, why do they keep selling it? There are a lot of stuff that don't work, but yet people are able to sell it. So why is this? I don't know. Talk to the government. You know. No matter what law you come up with, there's always somebody that can get around that law legally, you know. But is there anything? Me, do I use additive? I've never put any kind of oil additive in any kind of car. I, I've learned a long time ago when I was a kid. My dad owned a junkyard, okay? And we, if, if, or additives and stock leaks and all kind of crap, if they actually worked, that would have put my father out of business. There was a lot of people came in needing power steering hoses, needed radiators, needed engines or whatever they needed because they was bad. And they had tried all different kind of stuff to fix the leaks or whatever, and it never worked. But people, you know, people, I'm going to tell you what people, it, I hear a lot of people say this. Why don't you just try? It doesn't cost that much. It's a lot cheaper than the engine. So why don't you just try? Dre, I'm done. Y'all have a good day. Bye.